Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to uh, call the Community Engagement Advisory Committee to order. Uh, I'd like to have Pastor Smith lead us in invocation, sir. Let us pray. Father, as we come to you with matters of our city, we thank you right now for wisdom and knowledge to guide us. We thank you right now, Lord God, that you continue to grace our city as you've done in the past. And I know you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let us come, give us wisdom to do your work and, and attend to the needs of our city. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'd like to welcome everybody, introduce the members of the staff as we go around the table today. We'll start with you, Pastor. Uh, Bishop Will Smith. Marsha Wright. Steve Forney. Tracy Jackson, City of Jacksonville. Lily Gray, City of Jacksonville. Betty Dawson. Bridget Sheets. Gloria Whitney. Brian Jackson, Jacksonville City Council. Frank Claiborne, Community Engagement uh, President of Time. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the agenda? Are there any changes or addition to the agenda? And if no change or addition, there's a motion to approve the agenda. So motion to approve. Second. Second, okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Well, that covers everything. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. The minutes of the August 26th meeting have been provided for your review and they're approved. The motion is carried, right? No. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. Are there any Motion changes? to approve the minutes. Yeah. Second. I'm sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next, we have the planning board update, Mr. Courtney. Yes. Since our last meeting and community engagement on August 26th, both the September 9th and uh, October 14th meetings were canceled because we had no agenda items. So that means that all permits were processed and no exceptions were necessary. Okay. Next we'll have the um, 2020 census update. Yes. Okay, Rob. Watch the screen as I'm going along. And I've asked to be very brief. I'm going to move through this quickly. And if you have any other questions at the end, please let me know. When we talk about barriers to participation, uh, the ones that you'll see up here, populations, groups, and areas, they fall into those three main categories. And so we're still considering how we're going to deal with this. So let's consider some of those barriers that people do put up about participating in the census. And as you can see, I'm only here for my tour of duty. What does it matter? And uh, that is one of the biggest uh, issues we have and uh, people who don't think it's important because they won't be here for very long. This is not their home. So as you can see on this slide, we had uh, approximately $402 million in shared revenue that was lost for the decade between 2010 and 2020. And, and not getting a good count, someone else can take your place, how could it be better if everybody were counted? And um, we had some issues with how the military was counted before, but we just need everybody to fill out the forms and we'll have more information coming out to people so they can make sure that they understand what's going on. I claim another military uh, barrier that we also identified is that they may claim another state for tax purposes, and they're concerned that the census will change that. So you can see that people will say, I claim Ohio, I claim California, I claim Kansas as my home, and I don't want to mess that up. And so we want to let them know that the census is trying to count everyone who wakes up in this country on late April the 4th of 2020. That is the primary issue, and that's all we're really concerned about relative to the census. Didn't change anything else. Uh, filling out residency, uh, I'm sorry, filling out the census forms does not change your residency. As I mentioned before, it's a count of the people who are here on April the 1st. Uh, it's not tied to whether you uh, would uh, change your taxes or anything like this. It's basically a count of the people on April 1st. Uh, those of you who, most of your religions talk about the fact that there's always been a count going back to pre-Roman days of uh, every community, every country, every, every group of people always counted themselves at regular intervals. And so this is just our modern day way of doing this. 
And if you're here, even though it's temporary, you still count while you're here. We have a, a billboard that you can see up there to help people get the word out. And uh, I think this was, uh, you saw it before, was Colonel Richard Flateau, commander of Camp Lejeune at the time, and the commander of the New River Air Station appeared on billboards so that people would understand what's going on. Who has time for this? Was well, respond, this responding to it will be easier than ever. It can be done online, it could be done by phone, or you can ask for paper. Uh, but one way or another, we're going to get to you. With the 2020 census, you can uh, respond. It will be easier than it ever has been. And as I said, you can do it online with your phone, PC, tablet, whatever you use. You can talk, call it into a toll-free number, and they will have people who speak various languages to help as you call in. Or you can ask for the regular paper form and mail that back in, so whatever works best for you. But we will have any number of ways to get into people so that we can uh, make sure that we have a complete count. And it's also, as I said, our civic duty. Everyone has a responsibility to help get an accurate count of the 2020 census. Uh, census has been taken, as I mentioned before, throughout history, and this is just our latest version of it. The Complete Count Committee, our next steps, uh, we're trying to decide how we overcome these barriers. We have some subcommittees that are helping with the messaging. You can help by sharing the message. And so uh, we have a meeting to, no, Thursday of this week with the uh, Civic Affairs Committee. We'll be talking further about this and what we can do uh, to help this message uh, uh, get out to people about how important it is to uh, collect this information. And the taxes that we all pay in are redistributed through census information. So if you apply for a grant, uh, monies that come back to the uh, area from the state and from the federal government are all based upon census data. We lost a, uh, a congressional seat last time because of our undercount. We want to get that seat back this time. So you can see on the uh, screen that if you want more information, those are two places you can uh, uh, contact. Also, uh, I do belong to another organization that is planning a uh, <coughs> larger public event as soon as the year turns over about this, the real ID, and the voter ID. We're going to combine some things that are going on that will roll out in 220. So keep tuned for that. We'll let you know more about that when we make further plans. But I hope that everybody is encouraged that you do it when you're contacted. Encourage everyone that you know and uh, so we can get a good count and we can get some more resources here in North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. Any questions? Or? Yes. Do they have yes. A, um, like a public service announcement that can be ran on TV or... They can... do, and those have been ready for a while, but as some of you know, uh, there has been a concern about whether or not we were going to have a question regarding... Citizenship. Citizenship, citizenship on this one. That's still kind of floating Hanging around, around. so uh, until that is absolutely decided one way or the other, you won't see too much, but we're coming down to the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, so uh, once those people get kind of involved in that, they can talk about it and so on, but as soon as the holidays are over, we step back into January, we'll be going through this double time. So you'll be seeing many more on uh, TV. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? I do have one question yes. in regards to, uh, you know, I go around Jacksonville all the time and uh, I don't hear anything about the census going on right now, so I presume we'll put a heavy hit on after the Christmas holiday. Yes, uh, sometimes you can get information out a little too early, and by the time people need mm -hmm. to have it, need to act mm -hmm. upon it, they're, mm -hmm. they're maxed out with it, mm -hmm. especially since there's some, so much bad information floating around. So I think what we're trying to do right now is figure out very, very good ways, because it seems like we've been talking about it for 10 years that we have, yeah. and now <laughs> it's here, and the window of time has shrunk from 10 years down to literally four months or, or six months. So we're trying to work through these issues of uh, populations that are hard to reach, what we can do about making sure everyone knows what to do and how to do it, uh, making sure that there's enough of us out here so people uh, have trusted voices that they can hear when they're working on this, just those kinds of things. So if you have questions or you hear questions, let us know through uh, our Civic Affairs Committee, and I'm on that committee, and uh, we have several people who serve there. And uh, so we can address them now so when it's time to really roll it out, 
we will have very, very good, solid, concrete, accurate information to roll out. We won't have to be going back halfway through to apologize for something that we said that we shouldn't have said. So yes, that's where we are right now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Um, we're going on to the next one is uh, Office of Louisville uh, Neighborhoods. Ms. Jackson. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Just wanted to give you all an update regarding our community <clears throat> development division. Uh, just wanted to report that the CAPER, which stands for the Cons Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report for Fiscal Year 1819, it has been sent to HUD. That, uh, that report for the end of year has been sent, and we have gotten a response back to HUD, and with some corrections, we have uh, res responded and sent it back to them. So they should be sending us the final documentation within the next few days so that we can complete our CAPER process. I also wanted to announce that we are rolling out the annual action plan for fiscal year 2021. We are prepared to go to the Trent River Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Association that's in Georgetown on November the 14th at 6 p.m. So we invite, of course, the SEAC committee to come and join us so that we can have gathered the public's and the citizens' input to tell us how we should spend the $352,000, a little bit over that um, amount for this coming fiscal year 2021. So again, um, it's gonna be advertised in the paper, but we also want to make note um, and get in front of uh, people during this broadcast that we are, we are gonna be meeting November the 14th at 6 p.m at the Trent River Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Association building in Georgetown. So please join us. At 6? At 6 p.m. to gather public input on how we should spend the $352,000 that we're gonna be receiving this year. And just wanted to give you all an update on our community development projects. Uh, the Jack and Miet Shaded Shelters, we have encumbered that and we're finalizing the purchase of those. So there are going to be some shaded areas out there at the Jack and Miet Splash Pad. Um, currently, we, they just had some little um, um, umbrellas, so we're going to improve that and make sure that um, we have some shade out there for this, this coming year, the next year. Mm -hmm. Georgetown Sidewalks, we've completed phase one. And we're going to be starting phase two and three, and that's going to be on the side of the First Baptist Church on Broadhurst, Broadhurst and Georgetown Road. Uh, the city manager, he mentioned that he went to an event and they were very pleased with the sidewalks that we put in. So they're looking forward to us completing the sidewalk project in, in that area. So we're looking forward to doing that this year. Also, we're going to be in the Georgetown Park installing a new Georgetown bathroom. So that's one of the things that we're going to do as far as our capital project. That project is slated to be completed around April the 2020. So we have started the process and um, getting that project started and completed so that we can um, make sure that we stay on schedule to meet our time in this requ uh, requirement with HUD. Also wanted to just mention that we have um, started the um, two down payment assistance housing projects in um, Newberry. And also we're gonna be planning on doing one at 211 um, Sherwood Road. So we have started that process as well. Uh, we have our rehab underway and we're just moving right along with our CD projects. We're very excited with uh, being able to meet some need in our neighborhoods. Okay. Wanted to report that currently we have completed 120 demolitions, two more currently being torn down. Uh, one at 202 Marine Plaza, we've completed that. And also the Onslow Drive Pawn Shop, you all remember that 
building behind the McDonald's on 17. That we, we, the, the city demolished those last two buildings, and so now we have a clear lot. Wow. Also, you mentioned that was a partnership with the owner. Yeah, that was a, a partnership with the city and the owner. The, uh, the owner, they demolished most of the buildings, but we could come in and help out and demolish the last two buildings. So right. that was a true partnership that we worked with the owner on that site. It was. Uh, plan to put anything in there? He's still in the planning process. Planning hasn't process. made a decision. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Also, the Jacksonville Youth Council on October 24th, the Jacksonville Youth Council had a spotlight discussion on vaping. The presenters present was Chief Mike Yanero for the, center, the director of the Center of Public Safety. Uh, we also had William A. Horn. He was he is the corporal with the police department, and he's also a dare instructor. We had Whitney Zezik, Jesus, <clears throat> with the child health nurse supervisor for the Onslow County Health Department, and we also had a trauma nurse coordinator for the Naval Medical Center that was also present. The Jacksonville Youth Council, they had a candid conversation about the impact of vaping um, that, that, was, that it has on its youth and identified ways to advocate for more education and resources on the dangers surrounding the youth and vaping. Also, we wanted to bring to, to your attention that um, the subcommittee the Community Development Subcommittee, they're meeting on the Youth Interns Internship Program. The next meeting is scheduled on November the 6th. We're rescheduling the Business Connect section, session in the spring to bring in the nonprofit agency and the youth together. So we're going to be rescheduling that in the spring. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Any questions, comments? Great. Uh, now we're going to uh, one city, our city, my city moment. No, no. I'm just giving you a game. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm skipping a lot of things. I'm, I'm not going to let you forget me. No. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. It's your, it's your game. So, oh, I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. So the meeting at the the uh, Oak Grove Association. Yes. It's okay if I mention it at my church yes, tomorrow night for uh, at uh, Bible study. Yes, ma'am. We encourage like, all the citizens to come out I'll and give us a like input. to put that out there before I go tell everybody. Yes, ma'am. For them Thank to come so out much. so the planning of you know since it is in Georgetown. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank and you. just to be clear, it's not just for residents of Georgetown. City, it's city all city. City. No, but I'm saying the people there Absolutely. in Georgetown. So. Um, this is just a quick update on where we are with our Country Club Dealers Initiative. As you all know, this is the location um, next to <coughs> Carolina Community College across the street from the mall. We have been working very closely with the School of Government Development Finance Initiative. They've done their market research and um, site analysis, financial feasibility analysis, and they're working on their recommendations. They plan to return to the city on November 18th to meet with the management team to brief them on their findings thus far. They will still um, continue their community engagement efforts. There'll be some follow-up conversations with the tenants and property owners. This is just to give us an idea of what they found based on their initial <coughs> community scan. And as a reminder, they're working to identify sites that will be primed for redevelopment and also to prepare a neighborhood revitalization strategy, which if adopted by city council, then we would work on implementation. So we're looking forward to hearing their report next month. And on our economic development topic, as you know, we've already partnered with John Hopkins University and GovX um, on their economic mobility and data connected project where we're looking to see how we use data to make informed decisions. We also have other partners there that are working in this realm of, of trying to connect citizens to services, which is NC Serves and NC Care. But one of our new partners is HUD. Had an opportunity last week to sit in on a webinar where they're launching Envision Centers across the country. 
these are being piloted in some of our largest cities. And what they're looking to do is develop strategies to empower Americans to lead self-sufficient lives and to connect low-income households with the resources. And what they're looking for is to do more than just connect people with jobs, but connect people with economic opportunities that will propel them on a pathway to uh, increase their economic position in life. And this is generationally. They want the future generations to do better than previous ones. And HUD's particular focus is going to be on economic empowerment, educational advancement, health and wellness, and character and leadership. Those are the four pillars that if we're providing services in those arenas, they will be asking us to focus on the outcomes that really are going to have an impact. For example, they're not looking at how many people you served, but how many people you move from where they are into a self-sufficient uh, environment. And so we're excited to learn more about that. And we're just promoting this philosophy to our nonprofit partners, that we, particularly the ones that we fund. But any nonprofit partner, if you're out there, think about the services you provide every day and are they actually having an impact in this area? Um, your at-risk, after-school programs, homelessness, whatever social service, feeding program, education, GED, workforce development, are people actually improving their stance in life? And that's what HUD is looking to measure over time and some of our other partners that you saw on the screen. Let me say something. Also, make sure we encourage the nonprofits yes. to connect yes. with you so um, we'll even know who's out there. Um, because a lot, we have a lot of nonprofits in the area that helps in different ways areas but um, a lot of times we don't know who they are you know That's so right. if we we learn to operate a little bit more in partnership and tandem and we always know we get better funding when you collaborate anyway. absolutely, so, absolutely. this so. is going to be key to our um, the ones that are already funded by the city will hear this presentation and we'll begin to help them build capacity to do it and then we're also going to provide a more in-depth uh, session on this at our board development conference in January, so okay. when we get all the board members together. And not everyone that gets funding, this is not just for uh, people that get funding for, uh, from the city, but we want all of our nonprofits to be thinking like this. Churches, wherever you are, if you're touching lives, the question is how, how well am I doing this job? Am I seeing the same clients over and over and over, year after year? Am I seeing their children and their grandchildren? And that's what we want us to break those generational cycles of the families always, um, are particularly the housing program is a big priority for HUD, that are on uh, receiving housing assistance. How can we transition them off and how can we empower them to live their best life? And so that's that. You'll hear more about it as we continue to get information. And then I have one quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a national effort? Yes. It is. Yes, particularly the, the the HUD one is. I mean, mm -hmm. all their federal agencies, the HEP, all the agencies that are related to HUD, which particularly are housing, homelessness, the Section 8. Oh, good Lord. You know, yeah, HUD wondering. touches a lot. So, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So this sounds like it's going to be a global uh, yes. issue. And you said that uh, you'll be holding or getting out some information to organizations that already do some yes. of this to bring this, them on board or... Yes, when we do our funding opportunity workshop in... It's going to be December 18th at 10 a.m. and December 19th at 2 p.m. here in Media Rooms A and B. That's here at City Hall. And those workshops are for any nonprofit that is thinking about receiving funding from the city or required to attend those. What's okay. The, what's the times and the dates again? December 18th at 10 a.m. and then December 19th at 2 p.m. That's so what we try to do one in the morning and one for the, in the afternoon. Do you think that we're putting the information out there? Uh, manner that people understand what's available because I, I don't think I've seen the Jacksonville newspaper or anything like that. I'm here well, to here in the government, you know, side here, but out there, I, I don't We I, really don't use the paper, and I'll be honest with you, unless it's a requirement that we do a public notice only because it only appears one time in the paper. You're mm -hmm. going to see it that day. If you don't see it that day, you don't see it. That's we true. promote stuff on social media, G10, and through email because it has a tendency to repeat. And so for the cost of return, a lot of people are not reading paper, newspapers anymore. They are going online, so we use those, those methods. And so I have a direct 
email database of nonprofits, you all receive them. And then whenever I send something out, I ask you to share it with your network. Please forward it because I don't know members in your church, your youth groups, other nonprofits. It's for you to help us spread the word. So we're using methods like that that are low cost advertising. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this is our One City Moment. This past Saturday, we um, went into Country Club Dealers and did a neighborhood cleanup. We had a great time. It was a very, I thought we had more pictures. Um, it was a great time. I tell you, if you drive through there today, it looks amazing. Uh, it really does. It looks amazing. We had a zero turn lawnmower, every grass, every yard got cut. We picked up litter. And surprisingly enough, and I won't it's a surprising, but it's a good thing, it wasn't as bad as we have found it in previous uh, cleanups. So it is much improved. The, the message is getting out. We're doing a, a great job. We had seven uh, property owners come out to help. The farthest one was a, a owner that lives in Newburn, drove all the way up from Newburn to meet us at 8 o'clock Saturday morning. Very impressive. See, we had some youth out there, but it was a good, good Saturday morning. Nice weather. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Talking about future agenda items, uh, topics. Um, looking for uh, suggestions, topics, ideas, policies, programs, and other actions that uh, may advance the mission of the community engagement advisory committee. Uh, so, anybody else an open table? Come forward. I can just tell you from my own personal experience, I just came back from uh, Salina, Kansas. I uh, sit on the academic cur curriculum board for, uh, for the university out there. And uh, we're rewriting the uh, emergency uh, management program and the uh, incarceration uh, thing. We're looking at how to bring, because they're having people shortages out there, tremendous people shortages, not enough people to do the work. So we're trying to figure out how to uh, Get the prisoners coming out of the jail and offering them back into the society. So we've got a program set up for that. And uh, right now we're trying to work and see what needs to be done, what the businessmen or the community needs in order to accomplish that. Just to let you know that. Okay, okay. I, would, I want to talk to you a little bit more on that because I've been trying to work in that space yeah. and gather a lot of more information concerning uh, reentry, not only that, but prevention as well. So, well, every community in the United States, from what I've seen, okay, and uh, has about similar problems, has similar problems. They got a lot of homelessness out there, and it can be homeless in the middle of Kansas in November, December, it's cold, okay? That's mm -hmm. why so I like Jacksonville, North Carolina, it's nice. But just open the future uh, agenda topics. Anybody got any suggestions, ideas? I, I will say in December, around that, that homeless topic, I don't have the date because it's just still in the planning stages, but the recreation department is going to participate in the world's biggest sleep out where you sleep outside like the homeless so you can experience what they go to what, what well, they go through the world's December. biggest sleep out Men? it's December. in December December or January it's gonna be cold it's to your cold. point yeah. uh, it's cold it's here cold. in December it, it, it January. Can. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will bring you more information if you like, <laughs> like to participate in <laughs> uh, your church Get out sleeping bags in the parking lot. Go it's an eye opener. Yeah, 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 it may. You know, yeah, we don't know yet. We're, gonna, we're working out on location. Cool. But I just, yeah. He just yeah. made me think of that when he said it's cold and homeless. Yeah. We're actually going to have an event to yeah. bring awareness to that issue. Mm -hmm. Sounds so, we'll good. Sure. Yeah. I got one question. Yes, Are they still working on the old Piggly Wiggly building? Yes, ma'am. Will they be coming close to that? Yes, they been are. a long time. They actually are in the process now of, uh, Tracy, you can talk about this, the bid process. Yes, they're advertised. Um, they have a, a bid that's advertised on the completion of the homeless day shelter part. Okay. So that has been advertised at the state and local levels. Um, they've advertised for Section 3. So that bid has already been out, and they're um, going to start awarding the bid around January. Mm -hmm. So we should be seeing some more activity. Okay. And their goal is to complete the homeless shelter portion uh, June, by June, June of 2020. A question here about hiring for the census. Is there a, uh, you can sign up now or do you have to wait until oh, two yes. or three months? 
Uh, oh, yes, I, I can tell you that uh, census.gov, the people mm -hmm. are interested in that they are still, because uh, they've been sort of under hiring, not under hiring, but the word hasn't gotten out the way we would hope. And I'm not sure people really understand what it is that you, you are going to be asked to do. So mm -hmm. anybody who's watching or if you have your feelers out, census.gov. Uh, and look for jobs because there is an actual, I might put a slash or whatever it is, but census.gov and then they have a job section. A person can go in and you can apply online and then uh, you meet and find out because they'll have people who have been, who will be on the street actually going from door to door like the traditional way. Then there'll be people who will be calculating how much has already come in, where it's coming in because you can tell from where they come in what areas are still not responding. And that's a big thing that we're going to be trying to work out because we've seen the 2010 data about, and you'd be surprised how many pockets of uh, Onslow County were very low in reply or response. And um, so, and being able to, with newer technology, to not only look at that, but evaluate how to address it is an advantage we have this time that we didn't have last time. And so, you probably have a team that can saturate right in there. Mm -hmm. So people who have all kinds of interests, you may have someone who is <coughs> retired and was, was deep into IT and, and, you know, people don't really want to lose their skills, so they'd like to do, they have opportunities for any background, any interest, part-time, full-time, all of that. And it is a good way for someone to make a few dollars, you know, uh, for about four to six month periods, you know, if you have clients get an experience. You never know where it'll grow. Because the lady, the young lady that we met, oh, some time ago, who is serving the, <coughs> I'd say, uh, regional area out of Atlanta, you know, like that. She started that way, just as a, a, a part-time census person, and got into it, got caught up in it, and is now a full-time permanent employee who works several states. And this is, and North Carolina is part of her region. And so she said that she never dreamed that she would still be doing this. She only came in for a, a few months part-time and it just went on from there. And that's right. Who can't um, have to take a census job, mm -hmm. you know? Have to take well, because it's a federal situation, I would say the ADA would, would be part of that as well. So anybody, if somebody has disabilities or has to work from home and cannot get out to the street, it's not all pounding the pavement. It's, it's working from home, it's calling people, it's looking at data, it's all of that. And it was brought to my attention that like municipal officials might can't do that. Oh, now that might be an yeah, issue. Yeah, so because might be conflicts involved mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure <coughs> who can't, and that's one of the things. Well, that's a good question. I'd be glad to bring them back right. to, uh, mm -hmm. but as far as anybody who's listening, who's thinking that, well, if I can't drive or I can't get out right. or I'm older, or whatever, I would assume you'd have to be at least 18, likely, because you'd have to be able to enter into yeah. a, an actual employment contract, but beyond that, they're really looking for, and the fact that we have a very diverse population in this community would be encouraging, because there are people who feel left out. We want everybody, everybody to be counted, so we encourage people, no matter who you are, where you live, or whatever, that uh, if you're interested, go on that site, find out what's going on, and uh, and I'll try to bring back some information on that to the next meeting as well. Thank you, Any other proposed agenda items? Questions? Pastor Sheet, you're sitting down there. I know you've got some questions, sir. Not today. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We got you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> question comments. Anybody have question comments for consideration or community awareness? I saw it on the Jack Emmy yet. Um, Center up there. Is there any updates on it? Council yeah, right now. Okay. I think I put the roof back on here. Um, we're actually working on trying to get the front part together. We, matter of fact, they talking about November possibly. Because we were looking at bringing in another build at one point. Then we found that it wasn't. It would be more cost effective to fix, fix the front building to do some programs. So nobody was thinking about doing the ceiling for. Uh, no, because the the back area is in pretty bad shape. Sure. Yeah, so. Stay tuned. But, uh, <laughs> and I would say uh, just quickly that the observance they had, oh, I didn't see them up here, but the Freedom Fountain observance is this Friday. It seems like this year was crawling by, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's accelerating <laughs> like crazy. 
And so we actually have our annual Freedom Fountain Observance. And uh, for those people who drive past and think how pretty it is, who are not from the area, that is a memorial or uh, that is dedicated to all of those who have passed through Jacksonville and Oslo County in service to their country. Doesn't matter whether they're from here or not, uh, they could have driven through and been stationed and left, they could have tired here, whoever. That is what that fountain out here means. Lots of kids take pictures for prom and things like this. And we always do an annual observance about what the background really means. So we encourage people to come on out. It's, I think it's this Friday, the 1st of November. This is what time is it? At what time? Help me out, you all. It is this the, the time, morning year? I don't know if it's in the morning we, or the evening here. I think it's morning. This is a morning. 9.30 a.m. 9.30 morning. 9.30 morning. morning. And right out here in front of the fountain that everybody knows downtown Jacksonville, mm -hmm. the Freedom Fountain out here. So I can tell uh, just come on down. It doesn't last very long. We won't have you out here more than an hour. And uh, we encourage you to come on out. In the morning. So yes. Not at night. And support uh, whoever you're thinking about or whatever. Just come on out and and see the observance for that. So it's coming. Now we have some other dates on here, but this is the one that's coming most quickly. And then you have a suicide prevention. I see that on here, but some other things are coming up as well. And also, uh, I want to bring this up, Oslo County Public Safety Memorial Wreath Land Ceremony. It's going to be at the county complex tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. Okay. Um, so just want to bring some key dates from the list. Um, I wanted to mention that our next home buyer education course is going to be held November 16th here at City Hall. Cost of the class is $25, so please call 910-938-5286 if you're interested in attending the class. This is the last class for this year, so if you're interested in um, purchasing the house and you need this class through USDA or through the city, this is your last uh, chance to take this class for this year and then we'll start our new schedule for next year starting the fourth Saturday in January uh, also wanted to mention that the Trent River Oak and Grove Baptist Association that mean you already mentioned it set 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, the nonprofit funding workshop wanted to mention that December 18th and 19th 18th is at 10 a.m. The 19th is at 2 p.m. And I'll let Ms. Gray go over some flyers and some information that she that you all have. At your um, seat, you have three flyers. I just want to bring to your attention on Wednesday, November 20th, we will have our nonprofit executive roundtable at Coastal Carolina Community College from 11 to 1 to 1:30. You can register at jacksonvillenc.gov backslash nonprofit. Our topic for that session will be leading together and we'll be doing some uh, forte interpersonal community communication style profiles this uh, session. Great speaker coming in, uh, Claude Morgan. And those this particular session, because of the profile and the expertise, will be $30 per person. We also want to announce something new this year. Normally we would have a holiday parade in November, but this year we're going to have a Veterans Tribute Weekend. There are going to be activities starting November 8th and Friday, Saturday, November 9th, and on November 11th, Veterans Day. Uh, we will have a concert at the Tar Heel Concert Lounge on November 8th. On Saturday, there will be the parade at 10 a.m., followed by a family fun event at the Commons. There will also be a Museum of the Marine presentations at... Um, the, inside the rec center, and then there will be tours of the Lejeune Memorial Gardens uh, from 2 to 4 at the observance area. And then, of course, on November 11th, there will actually be a Veterans Day ceremony at 11 a.m. at the DAB building. And for more information and more details on this weekend, we would ask you to visit VeteransTributeWeekend.com. Also added to that, they will be at the USO on Veterans Day on that Sunday. They will feed all veterans with the Onslow Band. Awesome. And we're expanding this year, first time, so we're really hoping this is successful. I'm sure it will be. And then you also have information on our new uh, hybrid beacon light. The new crossing signal has gone up in front of Jacksonville High School. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Hawk uh, Beacon amen. went operational last week, and you have some frequently asked questions. That explains how the signal works. And this information is also online 
and it's circulating um, for the community's aware. So we wanted to make sure you had it in case anybody would ask you about it as well. Well, we're gonna look at it. Yeah, I did. Pass it every day. <laughs> also, just want to make a stop. mention that the holiday parade will be November 23rd. Yes. So please come out and join us down Western Boulevard. We are planning to have our One City uh, campaign incorporated. Some those some of you walked with us before. If you'd like to walk in the parade with the city, let us know. Welcome you join us, yes. And we have a lot of fun. So as a reminder, our meetings are the fourth Monday of every even month. Next meeting is December 16th. And then the schedule for the 2020 uh, follows. And also just wanted to mention our CD subcommittee. The next meeting was is scheduled for December 12th. Mm -hmm. Okay. What time? At 10 a.m. Okay. And February 12th, in case you need to also prepare, 10. at 10 o'clock. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you all put those schedules on my on my calendar? <laughs> Push that towards Carl. Yes, we can and do that, Councilman Jackson. Yeah, and one unassociated announcement, but uh, for those interested, the uh, Marine Corps Retiree Ball is November right. 9th. Mm -hmm. And tickets are available at the USO for $55. They're having it at what? They're going to have it at the uh, at the field house. At the field house. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll get ready to say the starts at the air station. Eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. That's six in the evening. Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. Military telephone. I did have one quick question. I, I was really looking for a uh, hybrid beacon. Is the because we have a county school system? Mm -hmm. uh, who would be best to approach about? Uh, I've been driving, doing a whole lot of driving uh, and odd times, like early in the morning when the school buses are out and everything. I have just seen, I don't know what you're going to have to do. I, and, and truly, I don't know because we have had, we had what, one or two children or several of them hit and, and one killed or uh, that I remember last year. And I continue to see people who just either blank out or zone out or don't know how to deal with this issue of stop school buses, particularly in the rural areas. So I guess it's probably the, the county that I need to. I'll be glad to because I, I was behind some cars and there's confusion about what to do on a main highway when the medians are there. Right. And my answer to that confusion is stop. So if you're behind me, you're going to stop. Right, you're going to go around because I'm the habit. But I see people in very dangerous situations, children, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they come from across the boulevard. They have to go over, and this is like rich lands. Mm -hmm. This is out on the highway, so I'm thinking about there needs to be, you talked about information going out. G10 is there, and maybe if somebody put together a workshop, they could keep running, you know, yeah, okay. especially since school is up. Because I just see people doing things that, and even if you're in the right, it doesn't make a difference if you hit a child. If you hit right. So, you know, uh, even if you have the right of way, kids, you don't need to be putting yourself or them in any position. Well, and I've seen a about, lot of that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people running in the road now, you know, Marines or whatever. If they're yeah, running on the side too. of the road. I wouldn't be running on the side of the road in Jacksonville. What do you think? They hit a state trooper and they almost killed To your point, there is marketing material that goes out periodically, and I'll talk with Glenn. Mm -hmm. We have media, um, of course, we have media and also the county. Both mm -hmm. entities can. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe, and you all are involved in the local uh, channels too, that, you know, sometimes when they have a gap to fill about a story and there's nothing horrible going on, mm -hmm. that they might fill some space for a couple of minutes and just remind people, you know, to be careful and do this. I, I mean, I've seen a couple of things, I just had to shake my head. I saw a good one yesterday, I saw this car climbing a telephone pole. You did pole. not, yes. Going from church, he was trying yeah. to literally climb that telephone pole. I saw that. Can you bring some information yesterday. possibly? The county, go solicit the county so when we have our next meeting, that we can get some information probably disseminate yes, throughout. That would be good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments, and questions? As far as that school bus um, thing, it's been some commercials coming because they actually got a school bus safety alliance that gives oh, all okay. of that information. Right. Well, they've been airing them online, what to do and how to do mm -hmm. it, okay. and things like that. So, so I've seen it just. Yeah. Where it is. yeah, but you know, people sitting around watching TV, reading the paper, or just eating a meal, you know, and it would come up. Not a long, drawn out, just 
don't do this, do this, you know, because right. I, I think people really have to be shown. And because I think people would look at it and say, oh my goodness, I did that yesterday. I didn't know I could, I shouldn't do that. Divided highways, stop. larger yeah. highways. Yes. And I used to drive school because I can't remember. But it's just like you say, um, and you say you're going to stop on some of this, you're going to stop whether you stop or not. Yes. You can cause an accident just as well as somebody else because you stopping on a road that ain't supposed to be stopped. Well, that's then true somebody too. run the back of you, mm -hmm. then it's all called what you did. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to learn those road patterns. You got to read, read a license book. It's updated every year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's another reference. And then they got yeah. one good thing, which I like that. When the school bus might go out, and it cover both lanes. <laughs> there you go. That's that's it just keeps on going. Yeah. 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 It goes out all the way across to the other side. Because mm -hmm. uh, I have seen people look around. And I'm like, oh, man, that's pretty neat that. And I said, are you really kidding me? All right, folks, any other comments? That's true. Thank you. Any motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, sir. Second. Second. All eyes. Aye. Aye. Aye.